When we think of famous horror films, a lot of motion picture productions come to mind. Poltergeist, The Exorcist, The Conjuring, and of course, The Shining. The Shining is a classic film, beginning production in mid-1978 and being released to theaters in 1980. It's based off of Stephen King's novel of the same name and tells the story of Jack Torrance, a caretaker at the Overlook Hotel in the Rocky Mountains. Torrance, a drunkard but recovering alcoholic father, gets his job at the facility. However, after he and his family get locked in during a snowstorm and learn more and more about the hotel's haunted past, Torrance begins to go crazy and snap as time continues. The film then goes through sequences of horrifying and suspenseful shots and has a major emphasis on the supernatural the entire time. With unreal acting, clever casting, and a great story, The Shining was bound to become one of the most famous films of all time, and one of Kubrick's best productions. However, there is a very mysterious history lying behind the movie and its setting, which may shine some light on why it's so creepy up until this day. Of my life. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. <laughs> The hotel used in the story, The Overlook Hotel, although fictional, is actually based on a real hotel, the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. The hotel is a pretty large and grand building, with an imposing white exterior and heavily decorated interior. King was actually inspired to write The Shining after staying at the place, feeling shaken up by it. The hotel itself has been described by many as giving off unsettling feelings, and that's actually for a good reason. The hotel was founded by Freeland Oscar Stanley, a famous American inventor and one of the original pioneers in the U.S. automobile industry. He moved to the mountains of Colorado in an area known as Estes Park back in 1903 after suffering from tuberculosis. Hoping that the clear air in the mountains would help ease his symptoms, it actually did help, and he decided to settle there. Estes, being a person of lavish background as a result of his success, brought his lifestyle with him when he opened the Stanley Hotel in 1909. He made sure the place was as luxurious as he could make it, with lavish interior decorating and full electricity. The hotel brought great success to the region, and by 1917, it had become a full municipality. However, there were immediate problems from the start that had caused some degree of supernatural suspicion to arise around the facility. The first incident took place on June 25th of 2011 when someone died on hotel grounds. The facility's head chambermaid, a woman by the name of Elizabeth Wilson, was blown away by an explosion in room 217, the room that inspired King's story and that he claims he was haunted in. The explosion took place when her candle ignited a gas leak she had just then discovered. However, by some miracle, she survived the explosion that brought down nearly a tenth of the building, and kept working there until 1950. The guests who stayed in room 217 have reported being haunted by Wilson's ghost there, although apparently she still still working after death. Wilson isn't the only ghost that's been spotted on site, however. According to past guests, the property's first owner, a man by the name of Lord Dunraven, has been spotted multiple times in room 407, even when it's vacant. A couple rooms down the hall, room 418 is said to have been haunted by a number of children, whose laughter can be heard throughout the floor 400 hallways. Back to room 217, King reported actually seeing the ghost of a young boy calling for his nanny. That's pretty terrifying, making it even more terrifying terrifying, however, is that when King and his wife had originally booked into the hotel, it was completely empty. They were the only visitors in the entire building. It's not actually known whether the hotel was haunted or not, of course, and although we have plenty of personal accounts to go off of, at the end of the day, they inevitably boil down to just that, personal accounts. However, there's no denying it is an eerie and unsettling place, and clearly, that was enough to inspire King to write one of his most famous stories. Although Kubrick's film doesn't actually take place at the hotel, and has a lot of noticeable dissimilarities to the original story, something that bothered King for years, it still does an amazing job at giving viewers an eerie feeling. And while no one truly knows if the hotel is haunted or not, its legacy as a place of mystery will forever remain solidified in our minds as a result of the work of some very creative people.